What I don't want you to do after this video is think, now I have to excavate my own heart and figure out everything that's wrong with me in the next 10 minutes and just beat myself with a bat. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. And I am Sister Maria Regina. And I am a Franciscan Friar of the Renewal. And I am Sister of Life. Sister Maria Regina, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Good to have you. Mm -hmm. So Sister's going to lead us on a little bit of a, a journey in the series, kind of just looking at mm -hmm. healing. And uh, and where we begin, and where like what we do, and and um, and why we do it, and uh, along the way, just to remind us of the good news of what the Lord is doing on this journey. So, sister, talk to us. Okay, I love the word journey. I think it's an awesome word. To, as we start, I begin with the heart of Our Lady, with the heart of gentleness and reverence. I know that we all have places in our hearts that are sensitive, that could be hurting, that could be maybe touched in these conversations and just know that I really reverence that and Our Lady does too. And I approach you with just gentleness and maternal love uh, with every ounce of my heart. And the journey of healing, there are so many resources in the church. I mean, Dr. Bob shoots, there's just so many resources out there. So this is just one little perspective on healing. And I think a great place the journey starts is with self-awareness. <laughs> if we're going to heal, we need to be aware of what's happening inside, of where the places are that I need healing. So just to speak for a couple of minutes about self-awareness, self-awareness, it's the, the key to growth, the key to freedom. A key takeaway from this is God reveals in order to heal. If you don't remember anything else, just remember that line, God reveals in order to heal that when we're becoming aware of difficult places, painful places inside, that is a grace. It's a good thing. It's, it's the Father saying to you, I want to help you grow there. I want to heal that wound. I want to speak my love there. I'm going to bring light into that place of your heart. So God reveals in order to heal. <laughs> we're just going to hold on to that. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to become self-aware. Um, and it's a promise of God that we're going to come through it. Great place to start with self-awareness is a prayer that is um, sometimes called the examine prayer. And it's sometimes known as an examination of conscience. Personally, I love the name examine prayer. And there can be a stereotype with it. Wow, I just look back at the day and think about everything that I've done wrong and kind of beat myself up about it. Again, that's not what we're about. Examine prayer is a way of looking at my day with the Lord, with the Father. I love to imagine myself as a little girl sitting on my father's lap, um, looking at the day with him and telling him about it. I think a great place to start with the examine is gratitude. What was I grateful for today? Gratitude just opens our hearts to so much. And the more that I'm grateful, the more that I see around me the ways God is blessing me. So it's a great place to start, whether it's a conversation with a friend or the ice cream that I had or the air conditioning that cooled things off. <laughs> um, whatever it is that I'm grateful for it and, and to tell God that. But then to approach the examine, um, I love this approach as entering into this a Sabbath rest with the Father when after the six days of creation, the father took the seventh day and rested. And he looked at all that he had made and saw that it was very good. And he just rejoiced in it. He, he rejoiced in what he had created. And that's what the examined prayer can be when I'm with the father of looking back over my day and rejoicing in what happened, looking at the day with the father and talking to him about it and asking him to shed his light on it. Over time, we can start to notice patterns that are happening. It might be every time I'm in that situation, I start to fall apart and I lose my capacity to be kind. Or every time I talk to that person, I shut down emotionally and I can't engage. And again, awareness, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be able to notice these patterns. And that's what the examine can help us with over time, seeing where the joys are, where the sorrows are. Then in general, how do we live in a way that kind of cultivates a lifestyle of self-awareness? I think obviously a huge part to this would be silence. I know I've talked about silence before. I can't, I can't talk about it enough. Silence, exterior silence, helps me start to hear the voices, the movements that are happening inside. Our culture is obviously one of kind of overstimulation. And I think that's an understatement that 
sounds, images, um, voices, flashing lights, especially in New York City here, but, but really everywhere, those things distract us from what's happening inside. And being intentional about taking a time of silence every day where I don't, I put my phone down for five or 10 minutes. I shut off music in the car, whatever it is that I can just have silence. And to ask the Lord, help me to, to be aware of what's happening inside of me right now. What are the voices that I'm hearing? What are the thoughts that I'm having? These things are really good. Um, it's, it's hard, but it's really good. And it, it helps us to see over time, wow, there's a place inside where I don't feel free or I'm tempted to run away from that memory, um, whatever it might be. Silence just kind of helps with that awareness. Another way to grow in self-awareness is just recognizing the gift of other people. So I know if I were living on an island by myself, I could be tempted to think I was a pretty awesome person because I wouldn't have anyone else to uh, bump up against or have to learn how to be patient with, <laughs> or I could just do my own thing and be happy all the time. But the gift of other people, sometimes even as messy as life is, as hard as it is with other people, they help me see where I struggle. They help me see I shut down when I'm in this situation. I have a hard time being patient in this situation. And again, these are really, these are good things. God reveals in order to heal. So to be able to name that and, and ask Jesus to be with us in that. Now, my friends, this is where the virtue of courage comes in. So we're just asking the Holy Spirit to give us all of his gifts and fruits and blessings, but especially courage in this moment. Because our culture, I feel like a way to summarize it is technology as distraction, that my phone is distraction. Everything around me, the stimulation is distraction from what's happening inside. And it takes courage to name the places of woundedness, to name the places of struggle and not run away, to actually go there, to say, Jesus, help me with this. I wanna grow here, Jesus. I need you here. Help me to lean into this and not run away. So just to be asking the Lord for the gift of courage in this, I think is really important. So the takeaway, God reveals in order to heal, and it's a journey, but it's good. It's for you. It's the Father promising you new life and, and freedom and healing. All right. Thank you, sister. Yeah. I got a little self-revelation for you. Oh, blip. Tell me, please. You are awesome. <laughs> I, know, I don't know about that. I'm... Sister Cora. <laughs> You're awesome. We got an amen to that. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for watching with uh, awesome sister Maria Regina. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Bye, y'all.